Last Sunday I mentioned that having the divine presence means that we live differently. We love genuinely. Mark Garrett's song reminded us they will know we are Christians by our love. Father Peter Skoll, a Catholic priest from Chicago, wrote that song in the 1960s. He knew that the love we Christians should share is that special Greek word, agape love, self-sacrificial love. I wonder when was the last time you saw someone give sacrificial love for another? We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity will one day be restored and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, and they'll know who we are Christians by our love. I believe one of the clearest examples of self-sacrifice was the 1988 Summer Olympics in Seoul, South Korea. A Canadian sailor named Lawrence Lemieux was racing in the single-person sailing craft called a dinghy. Off the coast of Korea that day, the seas were stormy and rough, but Lemieux was in second place with an excellent shot at first. Out of the corner of his eye, Lawrence saw about 200 yards away there was a two-person skiff that had been capsized by the big waves. One of those two sailors was barely hanging on the hull of the boat, but the other had been pushed by the waves further and further away. He was so tired from trying to swim back unsuccessfully that he was now just bobbing up and down on the water. The other boat was Singapore's Olympic team in a different race. The high winds and the waves had pushed them off course and overturned their boat. And in that instant, Lawrence had to decide whether he should go rescue the two men now or assume that someone else would come help them. Expecting someone else to help them would have gotten Lawrence an Olympic silver medal. But Lawrence instinctively turned his boat toward the men and paddled hard as he could for those two sailors. Both men had been injured in the accident, but Lemieux pulled them safely into his small sailboat and waited until a patrol boat arrived. After transferring them into the patrol boat, Lawrence resumed his race, but he finished in 21st place. story long ago, I wondered why Lawrence would give up his dream of winning an Olympic medal for the sake of two people he'd never met. One reporter quoted Lawrence saying, anyone would have done it, but I believe that far fewer people would help others that they'd never met, especially if you think someone else might be coming. The truth is that the gold medalist in Lawrence's race had already passed by those two same men who were in distress, and the next 19 sailors passed by as Lawrence was struggling desperately to help them. So I wanted to know why Lawrence would do that. After weeks of trying to find out, Riley Denver of the Canadian Olympic Committee helped me to email Lawrence Lemieux directly. When I asked Lawrence why he would do that, Lawrence took over two weeks to reply back to me. After apologizing for taking so long, he said no one had ever pushed him so hard about that question, and thus he'd never really thought hard about it. He concluded, Ed, the quick answer is my parents. They led by example. The truth is my father would have done the same thing. And then he finished by saying, these kind of things are no accident. The reason I said this story is one of the most important Olympic stories ever is it began a trend of athletes helping one another. In 1996, British sailor Pete Goss did something similar. In 2012, Ivana Yana, a Spanish cross-country runner, guided a confused runner from Kenya to the finish line and helped the Kenyan finish ahead of himself. In 2014, Canadian ski coach Justin Wadsworth not only gave a ski to a Russian skier whose ski had broken, but helped him strap it on to finish with the silver medal. In 2016 Olympics, Abby D'Agostino and Nikki Hamlin had a collision in the 5,000 meter race and the world was inspired because both runners held each other up until they both crossed the finish line together. Why would they all do this? The Canadian ski coach who helped the Russian skier when asked why he would help an athlete from another country, he said, It seemed like the Olympic thing to do. In our day and time, when so many people care more about their own self-interest than they do about others, it is nice to see people living sacrificially. I hope that for you and for me, these things are encouraging, but more important than that, much more important, I hope these things challenge us at our core. 
Isn't it time that people see something being done out of sacrificial love? And instead of saying that's the Olympic spirit, they say that person must be a Christian or that person must be a follower of Jesus. May we ourselves say the same thing that Mark's saying, the same thing that Father Peter penned in his song 60 years ago. They will know we are Christians by our love. So please get out there and love someone sacrificially. And then when they ask why you did it, just say, because Jesus did it first for me. All praise to the Father from whom all things come and all praise to Christ Jesus, his only Son and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love and they'll know by our love and they'll know we are Christians by our love by our love and they'll know we are Christians 